Hello. I am Super Moon Tarot. <laughs> Hello! How are you doing? We are doing a check-in. We're like checking in. How are you doing at this moment? And the cool part is it's meant to branch off pretty openly into either excitement and better understanding to enjoy and benefit from who you are now and the place you're at in your life, or maybe it is going to go into some guidance and solutions about where to divert or change, you know, perspectives. It potentially can go into some future stuff. It's all going to pop in based on now, which is really fun. And I, you know, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to do this more in the future because when do you not you know, benefit from checking in with yourself regularly. You know what I mean? So that's what we're doing today. Uh, in addition to that, as you guys know, I, uh, you're allowed to tip and donate if you would, if you would like to, it's very appreciated. And if you want, you can go do that through Patreon where you, in addition to the very kind gesture, you get exclusive content. Uh, I post a ton over there. I talk about it all the time. I posted three new videos over there. Um, we talked about explaining a certain part of the spirit realm. I'm going to be doing a bit of a series on about talking about different areas of the spirit realm. We're going to be talking about the Tower of Healings in that one. That's really fun. I made another video about going to the Akashic Records and looking up the spiritual meaning behind birthmarks. And I did a whole video where somebody had a fear about what if they have worked with fairies? What if they're in a contract and they don't even know it? And so I go into like personal experiences and understanding like how to basically prevent that and what that's like. And it, it goes into like a whole bunch of other branches of subjects. So that was really fun. In addition to that, I just wanted to share uh, two things with you guys. One is personal. It's so silly, but I just want to share it. Um, I love my cat so much. And I wanted to know if this has happened to any of you guys. But you know when cats make that weird little sound when they're trying to talk to birds when they're like hunting through looking out a window and they're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, my cat out of nowhere, very intensely jumped up behind my head and started making those sounds and I realized they were looking at some birds and we looked at them together and both it was really beautiful because I love seeing birds up close and personal but it was like I could tell my cat was like thought we were like hunting together and I just thought that was really fun and cute and bonding and I just loved it so much and then the um second thing I was gonna say this is just random, but I just feel compelled to share this. One time I was talking to Source and they just had this fantastic um, perspective on how to essentially go about viewing, you know, life and creating and everything like that. They said, you want to view life as like a canvas and you don't want to let whatever's happening on the canvas affect you or dictate what you're gonna do next. Instead, you wanna proactively realize that you're an artist and that the canvas only exists based on whatever you're creating. And so you want to regularly be more checked in with that perspective and regularly ac and actively create so that the canvas, instead of it affecting or influencing you, you instead are continuously influencing and then enjoying the influence of what you've created on the canvas. You don't want to look at the canvas and let it change what you're going to do next. You instead want to be the artist always making the next canvas. So I just thought that was really beautiful. And I think it really simplifies when we sort of get caught up in things or how we're approaching stuff. And I think it doesn't get expressed enough that you want to at all times be in this mindset of not what has happened to you and then react to it, but rather actively at all times, what is it that you want out of life? Sometimes when I'm manifesting, I actually manifest experiences. And I'm not just talking about something like traveling. I'm more talking about like, let's say I'm going to go pick up a coffee from like some sort of coffee place. I will manifest that that experience is lovely. And that my experience getting uh, the coffee from the barista is a fun, magical experience. So it can be literally any tiny detail in your life. What every, what every tiny detail in your life would you like to see the benefit of? Whether there be general 
or specific. So some just food for thought. And I'd actually love to know what you guys um, think in return. In fact, actually, if you got this far and are enjoying what I'm saying, um, please leave a sunglasses emoji in the your comment or just like if you comment a sunglasses emoji and I'll be like ooh they knew <laughs> and then um please feel free to tell me what you think or your maybe your own analogy or perspective I would love to know anyways back to our reading uh we've got group number one two three I'm gonna give you a moment to sort of say to yourself hey self we're checking in you're checking in with yourself and then pick the group you resonate with I'm gonna give you a moment to do so Fantastic. Now let's get started with this reading with group number one. Oh, um, you can go down in the description to skip to your designated group. <laughs> Anyways, back to what we were saying. Group number one. Group number one. Let's check in with you and see what's going on by looking at the cards. We've got the Knight of Swords upright. I love that for you. The Two of Wands in reverse. Not even surprised. That's like so um i feel like that comes up a lot for people <laughs> the hangman in reverse the wheel of fortune upright the nine of cups in reverse and ooh, um the death card upright this one uh doesn't feel like what it typically represents so just give me a second to go over everything look at the details and consult my spirit guides and i'll be with you in one moment I have a feeling that this reading is going to be uber helpful for you because um, there's so much good stuff here uh, but there's just like a slight disconnect or you're just like what's that missing piece of the puzzle that final thing that makes it all come together um, so I'm excited to go over with this with you so first let's start off with one of the main important things that we see in the checking in situation which is the nine of cups in reverse my spirit guide was telling me that you're doing everything fantastically like you're doing everything right and yet there's just something not bringing it all together it's almost this feeling of like the manifestation quite hasn't come to uh fruition or in the physical world the way you want it to you can feel really good and feel like you're making choices that are should be giving you more momentum and yet there's just you're not quite stuck you can feel a lot of like hope and potential but you're like when's it gonna add up and so it's not that it's gonna add up over time and you just need to be a little more patient there's just sort of like like we saw, said before just one thing you should consider or uh put into action to finish it then turn this upright and essentially get all that good work you're doing to move forward and bring everything to life and get you to enjoy the fullness and the whole reality of what you're creating so we can get a little bit of a clue to this with the death card now normally this represents this idea of rebirth but that's not really the focus it's more this just general concept of a really big change my spirit guide said this could be anything from like a big move um a new job uh maybe it's I, I get this really strong sensation of it is a totally different way than you're normally living life like a good example of another good example of this is similar to when let's say you were someone that used to plan everything out right and you were very conscious in your head of being like i'm gonna then do this and i'm gonna do this and you sort of would think about that idea from one moment to the next every you know regular hour couple hours you're just checking in with yourself in order to get you to the next destination or task or whatever and something changes you realize you're going to stop doing that uh, you start to focus on things more in the moment like listening to a podcast or an audiobook and you 
are more present in enjoying whatever is happening then rather than worrying about the next thing, that would dramatically change your life. That would make it feel like you're living in a totally complete new world, which means then the same things you spent uh, sort of micromanaging, you're instead filling with new activities, going to new places. It's very much that kind of concept and vibe, as well as the more bigger uh, direct concepts we talked about, like moving and stuff. Now, how do we then give you that missing piece here, that enabling that big change, because when we get that big change in momentum, that's what's going to complete this slight disconnect here. We find this out over here in the Wheel of Fortune. So most of the reason why this hasn't moved forward is a karma situation. Now the good news is you are not resisting this karma. It's sort of like you're just in it right now and you're not quite sure of how to see the end to it. Now we're going to talk about that in detail as well too. Um, for some of you, it's going to feel like a pattern that you are conscious you're experiencing again. You're back in that thinking cycle. You're back in approaching life a certain way, and you're aware of these choices or habits you've fallen into again. Um, so keep that in mind. It could be like maybe you keep going back to a friend that doesn't really care about you deeply. You know, you're the friend they invite to fill in numbers or something like that. And you're like, why do I keep choosing to hang out with them just because I have no one else to hang out with, that type of thing. Um, or maybe you find yourself, again, back to that concept of the micromanaging. You're like, oh no, I'm getting like two in my head about uh, pre-planning stuff, whatever that may be. Uh, and then some for some of you, it's more of a, like it's the first time you're in this feeling of a habitual habit you haven't experienced previously in this lifetime, but there's a strong sense of fam familiarity. It's like an unspoken, you might not be really consciously thinking of past lives, but it doesn't feel completely new to you, even though it is in this lifetime. So the way you want to break this cycle, and that's how karma really works. You are welcome to go to the spirit realm. I love going to the spirit realm. This is one of the ways I've massively cleared out most of my karma is I would go to the spirit realm and I would like approach past lives directly and I'd cross them over. I would directly talk about them and you can essentially speed this process up really, really fast. So I'm just putting that out there. Um, I do have an intuition training course down below in the description if you're interested in spirit realm traveling or for my fellow spirit realm travelers super easy peasy. You can just say, hey, I'm sensing some karma. Can you take me to that point in time? And I would like to clear it essentially. But for other people who are existing in the physical world and don't have those two tools and resources, or you just want to approach it in a different way, we have the hangman in reverse. Now this is, I really like how my spirit guide broke this down. They described it as a, a different perspective. perspective. We're looking at the situation in a different way than you normally would approach it, but it's a contained way. And what does that mean essentially? So we wanna look at these little beautiful patterns as almost like wings. So this person is feeling very free in the way they're approaching it. It's almost like you're looking at a video game or a simulation where you're removed from it enough, right? And you really feel like you can pick and choose options and experimenting on what if I did this? What if I did that? But it's contained in that same way as well because you're not directly in it. So you definitely feel uh, like you're not going to fall essentially, which then goes to them uh, having themselves tied back. So what you're going to do is now you can either do this by yourself or you're welcome to invite a friend or a family member, but you're going to look at your situation as if it's happening to somebody else. Now you do want to, I want to be clear though, my spirit guide did stress that you really do want to approach this from a neutral place. So if you were in the moment being upset about whatever's happening to you, or you feel like this pattern is riling you up and you're beating yourself up about it and you're like, I can't believe I'm, I'm thinking this way again. I, I can't break this loop. You're going to just take a moment to either sleep on it or meditate for just a little bit while you just want to quiet the brain, go watch a fun movie. You want to remove yourself from that mindset for a second and then approach it. And so you can get a notebook pad, right? You can get a notebook pad with friends or by yourself. But what you're going to do is you're going to write down this person and it's going to be you but you're going to give this person a new name 
you're going to give them this new name so they're totally removed from you and then you're going to write out very matter-of-factly what is this habit what is the situation that they find themselves gravitating towards and you want to do the best you can to pretend that if they're telling you this like what are all the details especially sometimes when we're trying to fathom an idea we don't realize there's extra details or approaches or things that are making us nervous or upset that we're unaware of like we sort of think it and absorb it subconsciously in a form of an assumption rather than you gotta you gotta put it all out there now once you have you know put this imaginary person out there and you're looking at their situation matter of factly again you're viewing it like it's somebody else you're gonna start again either by yourself or with someone else you're gonna start pretending you're giving them advice how would you do it now that you're not in this situation anymore now that it doesn't affect you don't think of well, technically this other person, no, no, you don't know them. That's their friend. If you're hearing about their friend affecting them, what would you tell them? And you start to think of it in this kind of way. And you can see if you feel like you're approaching it a little too intensely. Um, maybe you should approach it more matter-of-factly. Uh, some other great ideas you can ask yourself is you can say, why does uh, what does the situation look like as a whole? Like, how would you define it? Is it that bad? Is it, um, it looks confusing? How can we then simplify it? Uh, you could also ask yourself, how would they approach giving this like person, how would they approach giving advice uh, about their situation? Uh, are the decisions they're, they're making their fault or a byproduct of someone else's influence? Because you might be so wrapped up in feeling bad about yourself and the way you're approaching it and not even realizing that a lot of these decisions, first of all, you should always approach yourself with love and lack of judgment, but you might be unaware that all of this stems, again, from the influence of someone else. And if you just let that go, that solves pretty much all your problems. So that's just something you're going to approach it. It essentially enables you to learn whatever you're supposed to learn from this habit. Once you've learned from this habit, it will enable the big change to happen. Once the big change is in effect, wait, let me double check with my spare guide. Yes, okay. So once the big change is in effect, you know, you're moving towards it, it's happening. This is then when we have the nine of cups going back to upright. All your work adding up, you're feeling the manifestations come into reality, you're feeling the momentum again in your life, you're seeing the positive after effect of all your hard work come to life rather than this sort of Again, not stagnant, but you can tell like when's it going to happen type of vibe, get into momentum. Now, the other two things we want to look into with this check-in is the two of wands in reverse. Really simple, easy. Uh, you're overdue for an organization of your life. A bit of spring cleaning is how my spirit guide put it. So this kind of goes into the territory of two main different things you want to look at. One is uh, a really fun way of how can you make your life easier? So a good example is, let's say you're in the car quite often, right? Whether this be commuting or you're, you know, you drive to work, you drop someone off, you're kind of in that type of roundabout life. You would want to make your car First of all, you'd go get it cleaned, clean it out, but you'd start consciously carrying things in that car that you feel yourself uh, would make the trip more enjoyable or super convenient. So this can be anything as more plain Jane as like a box of tissues and some water to you could carry with you those little, um, what are they called? Those little droplet packets that you put in water that can make them flavorful. Uh, you can make sure that you have different pairs of sunglasses so you can have fun changing out your different sunglasses. Uh, maybe you have in there like a little gadget that holds your dip so that while you're eating you can dip something, you know what I mean? Um, keep in mind, be safe, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> So that's a convenience thing. And then when we talk about that spring cleaning, you're really going through your life. Again, bring out a notebook again, and you're going to really label um, different places you put your energy. This energy, again, is anything from physical activities, but it's also mental. Like, let's say you have somebody that really depends on you a lot. And there are circumstances where you can't cut it off. Like, you know, <laughs> a child. <laughs> or maybe you're taking care of someone and that is the that is the choice you're making and that's what you want to do. You want to take care of this person, um, whatever their circumstances is, and, and, and you want to make it more uh, convenient. 
when we talk about spring cleaning energetically and mentally, you want to say, what can I pull away from mentally? So when we talk about that situation at hand, in some circumstances, you'll be like, you know what? I think about this person way too much. I give them way too much of my energy and effort. Even when I'm not around them, I'm thinking about how, you know, things could be easier for them or ideas for help them managing stuff, or I'm helping them work out their problems. And when do I get to think and give attention? And essentially by giving yourself attention, feed yourself, when do I get to feed me? And that would be an example of maybe you just really mentally like when you're not talking to that person, you just mentally turn off from them and you're conscious of that. Or you stop talking to them in general. Or in the case for what we said before, when, when you, you, know, you can't cut them off, they're a part of your life and you're happy to have them a part of your life, you would be like, okay, well, after I drop my kids off though, I'm just going to stop thinking about the next thing. Like maybe you might make choices so that they have lunch later or dinner later, like you pre-plan it so that you, again, don't have to think about it. Your brain shuts off the day is yours the rest of the day. And it's very much that energy where you're like, again, where am I putting my energy? When am I taking time to feed myself? That's the most important thing. And you're just being conscious of that. But that again goes not even with people. Sometimes it's just like, do you feel like you're stressing too much about things that are not like when you're stressing about them, is that bringing the concept closer to you? Is it solving the problem? No. So you just stop thinking about it. You're going to be aware of those type of things. What isn't working? What is working? You're just going over all that stuff mentally and energetically where you're either going to pull back from completely, cut it out, or at time periods in the day or at time periods when you're not with them. You see what I'm saying? So you're going to do those two main things, a physical thing that's very functional, makes your life easier, fun. You're going to do that in various areas of like make a really awesome nightstand with like your favorite book, a water, little snacks, you know, things like that. Or like we talked about car or then and then and then simultaneously, you're also going to look at your life as a whole and think where mentally and energetically you can pull back. And then last but not least is the Knight of Swords. Now, what I love about this is it's not the way people think. So when people think of what to do next in their life, it often feels like, and I hope I'm using this term correctly. I never think about these terms. I just sort of use my own way of speaking about things. I think it's clairvoyancy when you can see into the future. A lot of people think that it always has to be sitting down and then contemplating what's next in the future in order to guide them. But that is just one way that you can use your intuition. Sometimes when you are piloting yourself forward in whatever, wherever you're supposed to go in life, and we're not talking about just like big significant life changes like over here, we're talking about like pure, deep enjoyment of living life day to day. You, you want to pilot yourself to the next fun moment. How do you get there? How are you moving in that direction? How are you making decisions to live the best life you possibly can live? Sometimes it is like you're saying something in the moment. And as you say it out loud without thinking, it is also simultaneously a clue and a, a truth to it. And you almost want to be self-reflective after you've said it. And then that's how you're guiding yourself. It's almost a looking back rather than looking forward. So what do I mean by that in the Knight of Swords? This talks about you being really outspoken at this time period. Like you're really comfortably sharing your opinions. You're really like letting people know what you think, both whether you're confronting them and you're being like, that's not cool. But I get also a lot of just general positive excitement of being like, and this is what I liked and this is how I felt. And as you're doing it, and I want to be clear with the Knight of Swords, it's like a gusto, like you're really sharing those opinions. You want to not only enjoy doing that, but you want to lean into it with a self-reflective element. So as you feel compelled to share ideas, compelled to call people out, compelled to do your thing, you want to take that moment to say, hey, you know, I made that joke and I was going on that rift the other day. Hmm. A lot of that joke reflected on uh, going to a theme park what if I went to a theme park? Let's go to a theme park. Let's try to go this weekend. Or you find yourself going towards somebody and you don't like the way they're treating someone else. And there's this moment where you go, do I even want to be at this place anymore? Maybe I don't like this environment anymore. And I'm meant to now get a new job and go somewhere else. And you know, the list goes on and on in the self-reflective nature. So you lean into that speaking into it. It's an empowering thing. It feeds you. It makes you feel great. It makes you more 
you because it is an essential part of who you are. But then at the same time, you are taking it to the next level and benefiting from it because you unknowingly in the moment, whether it be through a joke or something more direct and confronting, are giving yourself clues where you want to go next. And we're talking both long term and short term within that day, but also next month. So that's something you want to really give conscious effort. You want to like speak and then after you speak, go quiet and like think about what you said and be like, hmm, could I benefit from this knowledge? You see what I'm saying? So overall, like I said, you're thriving. You're doing great. <clears throat> but we went over some things that can get that momentum fully you know, in the process, we talked about things that are going to, you know, basically clean it out to make life more fun, convenient, where you can redirect your energy back to yourself. And overall, being more conscious of who you are and benefiting from it even more. So I love this for you. Um, this was a fantastic check-in. I hope you enjoyed it too. I want to know what you think in the comments below. And also while you're there, please leave a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Helps out so much. I love you so much. I will see you in the next one. And let's get ready for group number two. Group number two. Let's do a check-in and see what's going on by looking at the cards. We've got nine of cups upright. Ace of Wands in reverse. Wow, this writes itself. Nine of Swords upright. The Morning card in reverse. The Lovers card in reverse. And the Night card upright. You know what's really interesting? Um, I'm just curious for fellow tarot readers, whether you do it uh, professionally or you do it for yourself. I'm so curious. Please let me know in the comments below. Isn't it so fun and interesting when certain tarot decks um, will put in their just like extra cards for funsy um, that are their own their own mindset or fruition? Is that am I using the word correctly? <laughs> Probably not. Um, anyways, so one thing I love is some cards my uh, spirit guides will before I even shuffle the deck take out and they'll be like it's not going to be relevant it's not relevant and then I have other decks where they will have me leave it in and they'll be like yes like that potentially might come up so I always think that's really interesting anyways uh, let me know if you take them out if you use them to your benefit I'd love to know um, your uh, perspective and and you know I always learn from people so Anyways, let me look at all this uh, information and details, consult my spirit guides, and I'll be with you in one moment. Okay, I can get into this pretty quickly because there's so much interconnection here. Um, a lot of it's sort of building on another point, building on another point type of concept. So first we have the Nine of Cups starting off really positive and really strong. Overall, it is like compliment city for you. It talks about this idea of you really feeling spring's renewed energy. Uh, you are enjoying, like feeling like your best self. Uh, there's this feeling of manifestations being a lot easier. You're much more out of your head. You're just feeling Feeling this sense of oh this is the next fun thing I want to do uh, you know what about what if we did this I want this and there is this lack of something being in your way and you're really conscious of it you're really feeling that flow and you're feeling the simplification of being direct with what you want which is really cool however for all that positivity there is some important things we want to talk about now you want to pay attention to this. This is really important because this is something that's talking about an overall, almost I would borderline say a repetitive cycle for you that would help you break. So let's break that cycle. Uh, over here all, despite this person just vibing, enjoying all that they're creating and receiving back really fast, they're feeling that flow, they're feeling that momentum in life, there's this little tiny back. And this bag is saving away 
wishes for when they're not in this flow. So there's a fear element going on. There's just the tiniest bit of, well, I'm feeling great now, but on some subconscious level, I'm aware I'm going to feel bad again. And so I have a little backup plan. But the problem is this itself, that that there is the fear it's going to go the way. The, the idea that you do need a backup plan, not just unanimously trusting like this could be you forever or this could be something you could easily access whenever and you you can enjoy it now and you can learn to act and learn to keep this energy up or re-enter this energy whenever you want. And when we go into that concept and we want to face it, it gets into way more detail over here. So in the Ace of Wands in reverse, this again refers to the bag, it talks about the stunted energy. Now this is really important. Uh, we always talk about how whatever we're projecting energetically, we're getting in return, right? And when we have an energy that's stunted, it's not so much an energy that we're criticizing or saying like bad energy, something like that. It's more that there's a potential in you at all times to be this person. This is actually your norm. That's why it feels so good. You're not just feeling a momentum and flow and creativity and a directness, but it's actually who you are naturally. And when you feel stunted and you feel like you're not having that flow, you can feel the blockages in your way. You can feel your own self in your way. It's, it doesn't feel great. Now that idea comes from the Nine of Swords. And this is where we get our answer of what is stunting that energy the other times. You have these high highs and these low lows. You're either feeling amazing or very, very anxious in your head, a worrier and it doesn't feel great. And you kind of can't escape this mindset because it's almost like when the fears start going, you need to answer them. You need to give yourself comfort by giving either a worrying question or a backup plan. Wow, I can really feel like I'm <laughs> channeling. I'm starting to like feel that sort of trancey vibe. <laughs> um, so with that in mind, Spirit guides basically are like, you want to almost view this as a whole and realize you don't need to go through this anymore. You have the answer. This is who you are. Not this, and then there's some good times. This is who you are naturally. This is a false sense of comfort that is not giving you ultimately in the long term what you need. My spirit guide said you need to practice letting worries go and you want to view it almost in a like almost like it's a, um, a skill or an ability that there's not something wrong with you when you can't let it go. Not at all. It's just a skill you're going to learn to develop. And part of that skill and develop is being conscious when those worries come up and realize that by giving them any kind of attention or saying, well, well, I could do this or, or what if that happened? You're actually not answering the problem. You're not really, you know, preparing anything. And you're, the main thing is you're not you're not actually comforting yourself. You're not making yourself feel better. So think of the worry as like you're living your life and you're walking down this beautiful flowery meadow road, right? And out of nowhere, this crazy looking clown comes up to the side of you and they just start screaming at you. Look at me, look at me. And of course, it is so understandable throughout your life. You looked, you can't help. It's very distracting. But you want to realize, yes, but now I have the secret. If I allow it to not take any of my emotional attention, I realize that it's just a shouting attention receiving type of thing, consciousness in my head and practice developing, letting it go, practice only focusing on the flowery meadow. Then not only will it go away, but soon there will only be the flowery meadow. And the time period that I'm feeling affected by it will be much shorter. And over time, you will get proof that you will actually have not just like obviously more happiness, but it's more this mindset that 
When you're feeling concerned about how things are going to work out, you're going to realize that you'll actually have things work out more in your benefit if you not only allow yourself to be the fullness of you, who you are, but this person is manifesting without a care in the world. They know everything's going to work out okay. They know even if things change, it's changing for their benefit. And if things don't look the way they want it to, not only can those things change, but they can change change their circumstances. They can go to go through a different route, go to a new occupation, go to a new place, make new friends. There's this sense of possibility and unlimitedness and the joy of getting to be the person to decide what happens next. And this is actually the comfort that will give you what you need. This will actually give you the solutions you're looking for. So this is just a matter of practicing and this is important this is really important this is what's really going to help you have to not criticize yourself when you're in this state of mind or when you feel that stunted energy you're not quote unquote doing something wrong you're just conscious of where you don't want to put your energy because you've seen the proof of when you put your energy there not only do you not feel great but it doesn't actually bring you closer to the solutions and the relaxation you're hoping for so this is something to be conscious of when we talk about the nine of cups because when you're feeling great and you start to again feel a version of that screaming clown we're describing that little that screaming clown is in that bag right there that screaming clown goes yeah everything's great but what if it what if it changes and you just ignore it because guess what things are always changing and you're always benefiting from those changes and if the, you aren't it can immediately change for something even better than that and so there's no need to give in to what I like to call the beginning stages of taking the bait the beginning stages of the screaming clown saying look at me worry about this and remember it's just a skill you'll, you'll develop you practice it in the moment it might take a couple days or a couple weeks to let it go that's okay but the more you don't judge yourself for it the more you realize it's just something passing by the more you practice the ability of clearing your head learning in the moment moment to sort of not answer it and find better comforting um, results like, you know, taking a bath, uh, going for a nice walk, things like that, things that are more actually going to help you than answering those responses. The more you'll get better at it, the less you'll find yourself in those time periods. You'll also not be afraid if you find yourself in those time periods because you'll easily be able to just you know, be like, well, not a big deal. I know how to deal with it. And you'll also be able to keep the momentum of this going because when you're enjoying yourself in this way and you find those little thoughts creeping in, you'll be like, oh, that's okay. I'm just not going to give them attention and let them grow. So with all of that keeping in mind, we're going to continue the check-in with the morning card in reverse. Now, um, I don't want you to take offense to this because it's not meant to be... Um, offensive like let me do the best I can to explain this concept but my spirit guide described this this person laying under the environment as that's their environment right they created it they're living in it that's who they are and then here's you benefiting from that environment now that doesn't mean you're you know taking somebody's environment we're not talking about that we're more talking about this concept that you want to with it being in reverse break free of their environment and start creating your own now for some people it's like the idea of moving out you're like you know what i'm not meant to live in their world anymore because even if i'm enjoying it and i'm benefiting from benefiting from it from some level i'm following their rules what works for them what works for their environment and i can't fully grow and enjoy hearing my own voice and become better are connected to that if I'm not in that environment. But in some cases, it's like you're in a situation where you're heavily influenced by somebody else, and that influences the environment. You feel like you're always following their lead, what they're into. And it's really nice, and it's not bad that you're enjoying it, but it's become so much of you in their environment rather than you in your own, and you discovering what is your inner um, instinct, motivation, creation, excitement. What would you do if there was no nobody else in the way how would you go about handling things organizing things enjoying things and we're talking home environment life whatever so you being conscious of being in someone else's environment and consciously removing yourself and discovering your own 
Then we have the lover's card in reverse. And this mostly focus on, unfortunately, on a disconnect of self-love. My spirit guide said, you would sooner criticize yourself than to take the time to either say something nice to yourself spontaneously or just in general, or learn to love what's there. That's a big thing. I feel this very heavy, heavy, heavy societal pressure that because you might not look the way everyone else looks, and I mean this very strongly, it's like you're like, well, how can I possibly love what's here? I don't look like that. But you're only not only defining yourself from somebody else's influence, which we actually like talked about and stuff like that here, but you're not giving yourself when we say learning to love the who you are that's not like a cheap uh trick or something like that that means can you clear your mind and i'm gonna i'm gonna let you in a little secret when you're meditating it is so normal like let's say you meditate for an hour it is normal for 40 minutes of that meditation to be like you can't clear your mind you're wandering you're thinking about this you're thinking about that but eventually your brain gets sort of like bored or you finally are able to find your own self-control or whatever in all of it. And then, then that last 20 minutes, that's where you really benefit from the meditation. But you also benefited from the first 40 minutes of just letting your mind sort of work out all its sporadic thoughts. When we talk about learning to love yourself, do you give yourself that 40 minutes to work through the self-criticism, work through the one perspective you've been taught to have? Do you allow there to be silence long enough to make your own opinion, to be the one that is different from everyone else in a good way? Somebody who has a different uh, body shape, perspective, whatever. Do you allow yourself to be that version and really learn like, wow, I do shine. I am the coolest and deeply love it. So that is something to be conscious of, of what are your go-tos. We talk about the go-toing of criticizing and consciously leaning towards the self-love. Now, the last thing is a different way I'd like to say putting together all of this, which is the night card upright. So here we have two representations of you. One version of you feeling like you're drowning, as we talked about here, but then we have another version of you that feels like you're trying to escape it, which we talked about almost like when you're trapped in this mindset, you're like, I just want to get out of it. How do I get out of this? I hate this. You know what I mean? And you wouldn't do that. You would, you would be conscious of unjudgmentally learning to silence your mind, essentially. So over here, this is something important to acknowledge. This, both of these examples are not really who you are. You are not someone who is meant to be consumed by the weight of these emotions, but you're also not meant to be somebody who feels like the only choice they have is to run away. Now, we talked about the benefits over here in this part of this concept and idea, and, and, and where we talk about like flowing and vibing and speaking and, and being out of your mind and following creation, everything like that. But something we want to talk about leaving this behind, both of these, like being conscious that when you're in either mindset, they're both not you and you want to sort of, again, release them, let them go, realize escaping's not helping, uh, feeling consumed by it's not helping. You're going to try to get yourself to a neutral place. But we want to look at the moon in the background behind the trees. The moon is your intuition. And as you can see, the trees are blocking it. My spirit guide said that when you are in these mindsets, you essentially are blocking your intuition or sometimes confuse and think that these are intuitive mindsets. They're not. They're survival mindsets. You actually want to do the best you can to stop yourself from feeding these mindsets and get to a neutral place where there's sort of nothing on your mind. You're clear. You realize you're free. This is, again, who you are over here. This is this is the version of you that's benefited from being in that mindset. His, you've gone from neutral to you're blue you're thriving and my spirit guide said you actually have a really great functioning intuition system but you don't ever let it exist and take you in the actual helpful directions of mindsets and inspirative ideas because you're in either one of these perspectives so when you find yourself being in that perspective you just want to catch yourself and again not criticize but say you know i know i feel like one of these but following what the gut reaction that makes me want to follow them 
isn't going to help. I'm going to take a second. I'm going to breathe. I'm going to meditate, go for a walk. Again, I'm going to develop the skill to get to a place where I am not being controlled or giving into the effect of these things. And then I'm going to benefit from it. Um, I don't know if you can hear that siren, but I'm going to finish up here just so that we'll make it all one chunk. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. I would really like to know what you think in the comments below. I would also love to know if any of you guys have some great tactics and stuff like that, because it's really important that we all like share with each other and benefit with each other. Again, I don't know if you can hear those sirens. I love you so much. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I, I care about you so much. I will see you in the next one. Let's get ready for group number three. Group number three. Let's do a check-in by looking at the cards. First, we've got the Page of Swords Upright, which I want to point out. Um, she looks very bashful, so I'm excited to look into that. I'm also feeling very energetically drawn in the two of cups in reverse. It's not its traditional sort of meaning. So I'm excited to get into that. It feels very intense energetically. We've got five of cups upright, page of wands in reverse. Ooh, another five of cups in reverse, which I love seeing. And the eight of wands upright. Wow, this is fantastic. And I'm getting very pulled to chronological order, so I'm excited. This is really great. Um, okay, give me a second to look at all the details, everything, and consult my spirit guides, and I'll be with you in one moment. Okay, so first we want to start off with the Page of Swords. It feels like for the first time you're really tapping into what are your own thoughts and opinions and realizing the importance of sharing it. Now, there is, again, like we talked about before, there is sort of a self-conscious insecure vibe I'm getting. It's a, oh, what if we did this? But you know, it's whatever you want type of vibe because there's this fear almost of like, is that okay? What if I mess up? My spirit guide really wanted to stress to you the idea like the page that you are a student, you are learning, you're not doing anything wrong. It's okay if after you express it, you realize maybe that's not the exact way I wanted to, you know, put it out there. And that's all right. You have to try things in order to figure it out. And that if you ever find yourself kind of pausing for a moment and feeling like maybe you should keep your thoughts to yourself, don't. And also realize that is coming from a fear and worry if it will be wrong. But there is no wrong. You're just understanding. So that's joyful and exciting that you're not only tapping into your own thoughts and opinions, but you're realizing that the more you put them out there, the more you get to manifest what you want, the more you get to let people know what you want so they can help cater to that, or you can find like-minded people, the more you can change things for the better. There's just so much positive stuff that's coming around that. And it's okay if that feels uncomfortable right now while you're developing and you're sort of in the beginning stages of that, but this is to give you comfort so you can keep building on that and become more confident in that. Now, now that idea of insecurity actually perpetuates quite a bit in this reading, but that's okay. We're going to go into it so we can better understand it. And there is a ton of solutions. One thing I lo love about um, Spirit Guides is like when I do readings, um, I'm pretty open to like, you know, whatever's the most important information will come forward. But especially with something like this, where we're being very specific, we're checking in with you. My Spirit Guides went really hard into being like, and then do this, and then do this, and then do this, which I so appreciate. So, we talk about some of that insecurity comes from actually what's going on over here, and then it sort of continues on. In the Two of Cups in reverse, it talks about disconnect with you uh, morally. Now, it doesn't mean you're doing like awful things. It just means that when you go to make decisions, and you're very much viewing it as like, is this the right thing to do? Is this bad? It's very much that mindset. But in that focused mindset that you have, there's also this like, in your pursuit of being able to express yourself and understand who you are and what you want to do, sometimes you will try things out and realize later 
mm, that wasn't good. That wasn't who I am. I definitely don't agree with that morally. And that's where the disconnect comes. Again, we're not criticizing the mistakes being made. It's more that because there's a disconnect, that's then when the mistakes are being made. Now we're gonna build off of this, so keep that in mind. And keep in mind also the positive aspect of it because the reason why the mistakes are being made in the first place, and not constantly, not every time you're making a decision, but it's like you're saying to yourself, and I get this very heavy internal monologue of like, well, why not try it? You know, why not try this life experience or do this thing? Maybe I've been sheltering myself for too long or holding myself back. Let me let me try it out. What would it be like if I did do this thing? And then after you do it, you realize, I already knew this about myself. I actually wasn't holding myself back. I just knew what I sort of stood for or believed in and this isn't working for me kind of thing. And in itself, like the experimenting, that's not necessarily a bad thing that you're figuring that out. But there is the desire to sometimes go against what you would normally do because you're trying to fight this inner part of yourself that's like holding yourself, like you've felt like you've held yourself back most of your life. You know what I mean? So sometimes you're making decisions out of being like, well, I normally do. Am I even making the right decisions in that moment? And I'm missing out on something or did I already know the answer all along? But again, the disconnect when we talk about dealing with that shows up in the five of cups. Now, for some of you, I do actually see a loss of somebody and I'm so sorry and my heart goes out to you. But for other people, it's more of a general perspective things when things go wrong in general in your life. And we're not talking about the foretelling of things going wrong, just like normal things just didn't work out. You know what I mean? And this could be like big or this could be minor. You had a dream and it just didn't happen. You wanted this thing to this opportunity and you just didn't get it. Now, what's really interesting here, and I want you to focus on this, and this is also, you know, for my fellow tarot readers, and we talk about this in my tarot reading course, you can enjoy it in the description below. But you always want to pay attention to the details of the cards because the artists and the card makers really do a great job of doing little differences that extend to the deeper meaning of cards. And normally the five of cups have water coming out of them. So it's this idea that somebody spilled some cups over and they're really lamenting over the ones that spilled. And the main concept behind the five of cups is a perspective shift of saying to yourself, well, why am I so upset about this? Look, I still have some cups. I'm focusing on the wrong thing kind of stuff. But there's something important I want to point out here that my spirit guide pointed out to me when we talk about the lack of water. They said that when things go wrong, there is this focus on what isn't working, but what isn't working, what didn't work out for them, the upsetness of seeing it not happen, is actually, um, I don't want to say not warranted because your feelings are always valid. It's more um, things didn't actually not work out. There's no spilt water. Um, what There's not even a failure. You're thinking there's a failure. You're thinking something didn't happen, that there's something negative, but it's not even there in the first place. My spirit guide said, posed an interesting question. Like, think back to some of the recent things that didn't work out and you were lamenting over them. Ask yourself, if you didn't get that, if you didn't have that thing anymore, the thing that didn't work out, would it prevent you from obtaining a better version of it? So let's say you didn't get the job, right? And you really wanted that job. Did you not getting that job actually prevent you from getting a better job? Not really. There are still other companies you can go reach out to, other people hiring. There's different possibilities of you starting your own thing. Even if you started your own thing and it didn't work out, there's always another way to approach it. There's always another website that you can, you know, start your business through, another angle of approaching it. You not getting it actually wasn't a loss or a failure at all. So not only is it about eventually developing the ability that when a loss happens, you simultaneously want to really look for the benefits in every like type of thing that didn't work out and start shifting your general perspective there all the time. But if you find yourself catching yourself in grief and feeling really like um, defeated and, and again, at that loss mindset, you want to catch yourself and by confronting it and saying, did we actually lose anything? Yeah, we didn't get this opportunity, but did this opportunity prevent us from a better, you know, working out of that situation or whatever? So I love that perspective. Love, oh my gosh, spirit guides are the, the, 
I don't know what to call them because I guess kings and queens, but they're sort of like genderless sometimes. You know what I'm saying. So the kings and queens of being able to ask questions of uh, that will totally snap you out of a mindset, and I love it. Uh, so that is all interconnected over here. Now, the beautiful thing is we have the Page of Wands coming in with a solution, and I love this. So again, not only are you confronting that part of yourself with that question, but if you feel like you just can't get out of your head and it's still the grief is consuming you, you're going to approach the Page of Wands mindset. And again, it's not being run in reverse. It's more like heading towards it, is you want to get something new you're excited about. So again, let's say you're starting a business and it didn't work out. Instead of getting upset that it didn't work out, you're new, you want to think of like a new project or maybe a totally different new business, or maybe you want to try for an occupation that you have to interview for, like it's already kind of pre-built by somebody else. And you want to get excited about that. And you basically are diverting your grief into a new thing. Now, this is not only, this is not like the sole only solution. You still do want to eventually develop being the person that can look on the bright side and realize you're never losing anything because of the question we talked about before. And you want to eventually develop that. But as you're in the, so imagine like you have something not work out. You're going to first sort of try out the positive perspective. You're going to see if you can connect to it. You're just going to exercise some of those thoughts and ideas, give them a second to sink in see if you can connect to them. You're going to be conscious of if there's any grief, confronting it with that idea. But in the beginning, if you feel like you're not fully feeling the connection and shift over into that perspective, you can quickly go, okay, well, it's not working right now. I'm, I'm trying. I've tried. That's put me in a positive direction towards this. I'm going to now focus on this new other exciting thing and essentially distract myself and pull myself in a totally different emotional and mental perspective. The best way I like to describe this here right here, just something to think about, is think of yourself as like you're you're going to play soccer, right? And you try kicking the ball and running and you're a little bit clumsy and your aim's not good. So you try it and initially you're not very good at it, right? So it's discouraging. So somebody says, hey, do you want to try badminton? And you're like, you know what? That sounds exciting. Let's do that. By the way, badminton is like the funnest thing ever. Um, and you're like, okay, let's do that instead. Now, the thing is, every time you come back to this idea, we're, we're using just the repetitive idea of soccer, but technically this is for any situation an opportunity. So they're all going to be a little bit different. It's more the perspective you're changing, but hear me out. So we come back to soccer again. You're trying out again. It didn't work. You go, now we're trying swimming. But the idea is that because you keep returning back to soccer, or in this case, the perspective practice, you are little bit by little bit getting better at soccer. Eventually, you don't have to rely on this solely anymore. And you, I mean, you can, it doesn't mean you still can't enjoy doing it, but eventually you can just play soccer. You can just do the perspective and practice and find yourself leaning towards it naturally. Now, the beautiful thing is all of these are sort of a step-by-step -step, like process of you re-examining the way you're viewing things, but all of them are still on some level sectioning things out as right and wrong, sectioning things as uh, winnings and failures, sectioning things out as focus on this rather than this. And that's okay because if that's in your mindset, you know, basically you and yourself and your spirit guides in the universe are working with you. But eventually my spirit guide said in the five of cups in reverse, we see this person looking in each cup, right? So nothing's spilled that they're looking in the cup. But when we see it in reverse, it's the opposite of that idea. Eventually you're going to hit a point where you're no longer catching yourself asking, is this okay? Is this not okay? You're no longer asking yourself, did it go well? Did it not go well? You're not asking yourself, should I look here rather than here? You're no longer questioning, like, was that the right thing to say? And eventually you just kind of find yourself living, existing, not questioning it and just letting yourself be and who you are truly. And the beautiful thing about that is as you break free of these type of mindsets of categorizing them, the more and more, because these are just sort of like comforting that categorizing and helping you slowly break free from it. But eventually you find your inner voice. It just naturally comes from you and you're no longer in that mindset. And then this is what's so beautiful. There is this beautiful, huge chunk of like, 
We're talking op opportunities, manifestations, all this good stuff just waiting for you. And this is what's so cool about it. Not only once you have broken free from this mindset as a whole, and don't worry about forcing it right now, just give yourself what you need in the moment now, and you'll naturally progress there. Just trust it will naturally happen. Not only will you have this sort of as a huge like benefit at the end of all of this so you not only feel great really know who you are but all of a sudden you're like whoa jobs are coming my way whoa i'm getting all this money and love and friendship and funness and ideas but you never have to question yourself if you're somehow behind. If you're somehow, oh man, why can't I just get over my perspective? I just want to be here already. No, no. As you're sort of figuring this out and working through this mindset through the methods we were just talking about as those moments and situations arise, think of every opportunity not being burned in the background of not working out because you're not in the right headspace to receive it, but rather being tallied and put off to the side waiting for you. So as you take your time, however long that time is, it could be, it could be a few weeks, it could be a few months, whatever that is, as you shift your perspective, as you pull out of those mindsets, as you become more connected to your inner voice without self-consciousness, without even having to self-examine it, you essentially are building this collection. So the longer it is, the more opportunities are waiting for you. And they are sort of pushing at the bubble that you're in. And once that bubble pops, they're going to come at you fast, intensely, and in large amounts. You're going to love it. You're going to be ready for it. It's going to be easy for you to receive and emotionally handle and enjoy. And you'll just be in like this great situation of both loving and enjoying yourself and your perspective and your flow and all the benefits that come with it. So how great is that? We went from check-in to solutions and focused mindsets to like all this exciting stuff in the future. So remember that we're not judging ourselves. We're we're aware that we're doing exactly what we need to do in the moment and that simultaneously it's all positively no matter what building up towards this extra like wonderful experience well multiple experiences opportunity the, the whole the whole thing so love to know what you guys think in the comments below i love you so much please leave a like subscribe all that good jazz i will see you in the next one goodbye